In this brief tutorial, I'm going to show you how to mute and unmute all sounds of music in Blueprints. This can easily be applied to a game you've already added a lot of sounds to. I'll show you the minimum amount of blueprinting first, then how to do the same thing in widgets if you're unfamiliar. Without further ado, let's get started. This is the default side scroller project and I'm using version 4.24 of Unreal Engine. So first we want to click the show or hide sources panel and then click content folder and we want to make a new folder for sounds. So right click, new folder, sounds and then inside of this I'm going to make another subfolder just to put my generic sounds in. Ideally you would make a folder for music and sound effects and ambience and things like that but in this case I'm only using two sounds so I'm going to lump them into the same folder. Go ahead and import your sounds if you don't already have sounds. If you don't want to use cues that's fine just skip this next step but I typically use cues for all my sounds in case I wanted to go back and change them later in Unreal across all the blueprints I'm using them in. So if you are willing to use cues go ahead select them right click and hit create cue and we can leave the naming the same. I am going to go into the music not the cue but the regular wave and I'm going to go ahead and set it to looping so I don't forget to do that later and save. Next, I'm going to go up here and click on Blueprints and then open Level Blueprint. So when this level loads, we want it to immediately start playing the music I imported. So I'm going to right click and type in Event Begin Play. I'm going to drag off of that and I'm going to type in Play Sound 2D. So this will be non-stereo sound. And then we're going to select the cue music. In this case, it was called Glacier or something. And I'm going to compile and save that. Next, I'm going to open the player blueprint, which is found in the side scroller BP. If you're using the side scroller template under blueprints and then side scroller character. So this would be whatever character you have. And then right here where it says jump, I'm going to drag off of this and type in play sound 2D. And we're going to apply our jump sound cue. I'm going to compile and save. So now if we press play, we have music. We have a jumping sound. Next, we're going to come back to our sound folder and then we're going to right click and make a new folder and I'm going to call this classes. So this is going to be our sound classes. So inside of here, right click and go to sounds and then go to classes and we're going to make a sound class. And I'm going to call this my master sound class. So all sounds are going to be derived from this. And let's go ahead and open it up. So we can, you can just use the master sound class if you want, but if you need different categories, if you're going to have different mixes and things, you should go ahead and make children. So in this case, I'm going to make a couple of children. So you can just drag off and where it says class name, we'll rename this music because we have music for this example. And I'm going to drag this off and I'm going to call this SFX for sound effects because we have a jump sound effect. You could go further and maybe drag it off and make something like ambience. So I'm going to select all this and type in A and B if you wanted to. I'm going to save that and close it. So now we need to update our sound cues or our sounds if you didn't use the cues. So in this case, if you didn't use the cues, open your sounds, change their class to the appropriate one. If you did use the cues, you don't need to do that. You just need to open the cues and then change where it says sound class to the appropriate one. So this is my music. So I'm going to change it to my music sound class or the master sound class if you didn't make children. And I'm going to open the movement sound effects and I'm going to change it to my sound effects class or the master class if you didn't make children. And now once we've done that, I want to go back to our sound folder. I'm going to right click, make a new folder and I'm going to call this mixes. I'm going to open that up and then we're going to make one mix. So right click, go to sounds, go to classes, go to sound class mix. I'm going to call this SCM for sound class mix underscore mute. And we're going to open this up. So inside of here, we need to add in those sound classes that we made. We just need to add in the master and we can tell it to propagate to children. If there was some a sound that you didn't want to be silent, you could pick each child individually. Uh, but in this case, we want everything to be muted. So I'm going to hit the plus and we're just going to add the master class right here where it says sound classes. We want the master class. Now, if you change this volume adjuster all the way to zero, music will not start playing once you unmute it. I don't know why, it's just how Unreal Engine works. So we're gonna change this to 0.001, which is the lowest value it'll accept and then allow music to play when you unmute it. Next, we're gonna come down here to initial delay, make sure it's zero, fade in time, we want it to be zero because we want this to be instant. We want our duration to be negative one because we want it to keep this sound mix until a new sound mix is applied. So we want it to be muted until we unmute it. We want the fade out time to also be zero because we want it to be instant. You can save that, 
close it and then we can right click it and duplicate and we're gonna call this next one SCM unmute open it up and we're gonna change the 0.001 to a1 and we need to apply this to children I didn't check that off on the other one so let me go back and do that apply to children and save next we need a way to switch between these sound mixes so I'm gonna go to edit project settings I'm gonna go down to input and under action mappings I'm gonna expand that hit plus and this is just gonna be called mute I'm gonna set this to my keyboard F. You can assign this to whatever you want. And after demonstrating this, I'll show you how to do it in a widget so it's using a button and you don't need uh, key binding. So once we've done that, it will auto save, we can close. Now we wanna be able to access and control that. So we need to go back to our uh, player blueprint in this case. So side scroller BP, blueprints, side scroller character. We're gonna come down here below the jump. I'm gonna right click and type in input action mute. We're going to pull off of that and make a flip-flop for the first time we click it we wanted to mute it so we're going to pull off of a and we're going to type in set bass mix bass sound mix i'm sorry and we're going to set that to our mute and i'm going to copy it so Control c Control v and then when we click when we hit f again we want it to unmute so then we're going to change it to our sem unmute and compile and save close so now if we press play we got music we got jumping we hit f everything is muted even though technically it's 0.001 percent is the amount of volume coming through that's practically muted for all intents and purposes so we can hit f again music comes back sounds come back so now let's go ahead and take what we've learned and put it into a widget instead of having to use a key binding so I'm gonna come over to content and instead of making a folder, I'm just gonna make a widget out here. So I'm gonna right click user interface widget blueprint. I'm gonna call this WBP for widget blueprint underscore HUD because it's just gonna come up when we start the level. Uh, inside of here, I'm just going to search for a button in the palette. I'm gonna apply that button to our canvas panel. I'm just gonna rename this button to button mute. And I'm gonna anchor it to the center of the screen we change its X position to zero, its Y position to zero. It'll kind of be off-centered, but that's okay. I'm just gonna make it really big. Compile and save. Come over to our graph. So on event construct, we wanna give the player control the mouse and that is controlled by the player controller. So we want to right click, get player controller. We wanna pull off a player controller and we wanna say, set mouse set show mouse cursor and we want to set that to true so now when this widget is constructed when we tell it to be created um, the player will have control of the mouse let's get rid of this event tick and let's get rid of this event pre-construct okay and we want to click our button mute when clicked so click the uh, on clicked event we want it to do the same thing we just did in our player controller so you could actually just go over to your character and just copy this. So control C, go back to your HUD, control V. Now when it's made, we'll have control of the mouse. And when we click this mute button, it'll toggle between these two on our flip flop. You could take this a step further by pulling in, getting a reference to your button. So control click, drag in, and you could say set style. And you could promote this to a variable call it whatever you want and then you could in its settings after you compile you could come down here and make the button toggle so in some of my games for example I have a mute icon and an unmute icon and I swap between them whenever this is activated so I'm just going to delete that that's just something you could do to take it a step further to make your UI nice to look at compile and save and so now we need to go into our level blueprints. So click blueprints up here, open level blueprint. On event begin play, we need to create widget. And it's going to be, it's asking for our player controller. So get player controller. And assign that there. And we want the class to be our WBP HUD we just made. And we want to drag off the return value and say add to viewport so that it'll pop up on our screen. 
and then it will give us control of our mouse as well. So I'm going to compile and save. And now when we press play, we have sound, we can jump, we have our button, push it, and it mutes. Push it again and it unmutes. That is it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.